through the basics of designing a survey uh, and then we'll get into that further throughout the the chapter here and talk about how it's used and what it's useful for and the statistical part of it and things like that but just the basics today so for uh, for the start we have a sample and a sample is just the portion of a larger group which we call the population so for example let's say our population was the entire middle school we might survey just a sample of that space, a sample of the middle school, which maybe I'm, I'm just gonna ask uh, seventh graders to determine something about the middle school. So the middle school would be like the population and the sample is like a portion of that. So I might just ask just seventh graders um, some sort of survey question. And then we can break up the way we collect data in three different categories. We have a survey, we have an observational study, and an experiment. And let's first talk about the differences of these guys. Um, I'll give an example of them. So a survey, uh, it's, it's responses given from a sample. Okay, uh, Basically, you ask a question, you get some responses, and you look at it. Uh, then you make a general conclusion about the population from the sample. Uh, and so this is kind of like your most common one. It basically be like, let's say I just, if I like ask 50 students some question, ask 50 students at random, Right, it's just kind of like you get something in the mail for a survey, um, just just very basic. Usually it's just completely at random, there's really nothing specific about it, um, and it's kind of your most common one. And usually you see the word survey with it when you're giving an example, so it's easy to point out. An observational study is a little bit different, okay, because now you observe something and then make conclusions about what you saw or, or what type of reactions that you that you saw occur. Uh, and this happens a lot with companies, uh, especially ones that are selling certain products. For example, let's say they had two products. They had product A and product B. And they put some, some consumers to the test and they give them each product and they see which one they like better and then they make a conclusion off of that. Happens all the time. Uh, it could be with kids with toys, you know, a, adults with foods, things like that. Um, so observationally, you're observing something and making conclusions off of that. So you're not actually asking specific questions or anything like you are in a survey. In an experiment, uh, basically the thing is that you have like a control group in a way, like you, you change something about it. You're actually experimenting with something. So it says data recorded after changing the sample. Um, so that's the biggest thing is that you're doing something to experiment. Uh, and this happens a lot in science. Uh, for example, let's say we're gonna test and see how sugar affects the body in a way. And, and sometimes scientists will they'll test rats. So they might give one rat, they'll give rat one sugar, and they'll give rat two no sugar. And they'll do this with a bunch of different rats. And they'll see how it affects the one with the sugar compared to the one without the sugar. So that would be an experiment. Then there's two types of samples, a biased sample and an unbiased sample. And we want to avoid the biased samples, okay? Because that's a sample that favors one group and it actually makes the data invalid. So for example, let's say I wanted to figure out uh, what the favorite sport was of all the kids at the high school. And I only asked the basketball players. Um, obviously that's gonna be biased because most of them are gonna say basketball. There's a pretty good chance of that. So if it favors one group over the other group, it's invalid and it'd be biased. So the opposite, of course, would be our unbiased, which we call a random sample. So just think, when it's unbiased, that's good. And that's because it's completely random, because each member has an equal probability of being chosen. That's the key, and that's what we wanna shoot for. We wanna have unbiased samples, okay? So we actually have some good data to use to make predictions on things. Um, so do not allow the favoring of groups for a biased sample. Let's take a look at an example here. We have uh, a department store, and each day that department store chain selects one male and one female shopper randomly from each of its 57 stores 
and ask them survey questions about their shopping habits. Okay, there were some keywords in there. Hope you saw them when we read through it there. Uh, and it asks, identify the sample and determine the population from which it was selected. And then classify the type of data collection used by this department store. So let's start with, let's identify the sample. Let's be very specific here. So it looks like they're doing one male, one female from the 57 stores, each 57 store. So the sample would be the 57 males. I should probably put sample. I'll put an S for sample there. 57 males and the 57 females. And I selected at random. Well, and they're a part of the population. And the population would be, well, basically all the, all the people that come into the chain store or the, the store chain. Um, so the population would be all the customers at that store. So they're just surveying the 114 people to find something out of what they think about the entire population, right? Because that'd be almost impossible to survey the entire population. That's why you pick a sample. And then lastly, it asks, classify the type of data, uh, data collection. Well, those are three things. The survey, observational study, experiment. And this one's pretty obvious. They ask them survey questions. It's not like they're observing anything or making an experiment. So this would be a survey. So you got three things there. List the sample, the population, and then uh, which one of the three. Well, let's take a look and, and decide which things are biased or unbiased now. So here we go. We got a student council, and they survey the students in one classroom to decide the theme for the spring dance. Well, to be unbiased, remember, it's got to be pretty much completely random. If I just ask one classroom, is that completely random? No, that's going to be biased. Because what happens if I only ask, like, an elective class? Uh, you know... It might just be, they might all have similar interests and that one represent the, the whole student body. So I would say bias, and usually if it's bias, it's, it's not random or it's favoring a certain group, uh, something of, of that sort. Let's do one more. The parent association surveys the parents of every fifth student to decide whether to hold a fundraiser. Every fifth student. Okay, that's actually a type of, of randomization. So this would be random because we're doing every fifth student. So is that biased or unbiased? That is unbiased. Anytime it's random, it is unbiased. And I basically just stated it's at random because of doing every fifth student. That's why it's unbiased. Well, and let's talk about when it is like every fifth student. We actually have a term for that. And we'll get to that in a second. But we have three types of samples that we can do that, that are unbiased. We have a simple random, a stratified random, and a systematic random. So either simple, stratified, or systematic. They all start with S, um, and we'll kind of talk through what they mean. So simple means it's basically pretty simple. It's just everybody's equally likely to be chosen. It's totally random. So this one I just think totally random. There's no there's no strategy or system to it. Just completely random. We just say we just randomly ask 50 people. Okay, there's your simple random survey. Whereas a stratified is it's divided into similar non-overlapping groups and then a random sample is selected from each group. So this is the key is, hey, we got groupings here. Okay, so make sure if, if I, we took the school and split it into specific groups and then took a sample from each of the groups, that's where we kind of have a strategy, right? Stratified, you gotta think strategy, and you're breaking it up into groups. And systematic, that's that every fifth that we just talked about. A sample in which the items are selected according to a specific time interval. So systematic, right, they kind of has a system. A system of, you could do like every fifth, every tenth, every twentieth, something like that. So let's just put like every fifth for an example. We got a system in place. And then we're going to be given a, a type of survey and decide which one of those it is. So it said a neighborhood is divided into blocks. Then three residents are selected from each block for a survey on hours of operation for the community pool. Identify the sample. Okay, well the sample would be what? Three residents from each block. So sample, three residents from each block. And the population, 
would be, well, the entire neighborhood, right? Because that, that sample is representing the entire neighborhood. Neighborhood. Oh, forgot the R. That's gross. Anywho, then it says classify the sample as simple, stratified, or systematic. Well, is it simple or are they just completely random? No, they divided it into blocks. Okay, well, is it stratified or systematic? Is there a system or are they going like every fifth, every tenth? No. Nope. So no, it's not those two. We actually have a strategy, right? We're dividing it into groups and then asking from each group. So that means it is stratified. So you just got to think through it. And that's basically all we're doing today with the design of the survey. So pretty basic, not getting too in depth. Um, so just think through it.